Welcome everyone to this Omdia Fast Chat video that today is going to explore the digital disruptions businesses are facing and how NTT data is supporting organizations in navigating some of these complexities. My name is Adam Holtby. I'm a principal analyst with Omdia as part of our digital workplace team. I have a very keen research interest in all things service management and workflow digitization. And in this first of a series of two NTT Data Fast Chat videos, I'm delighted to be joined today by Abby Joshi, who's Senior Vice President for Configured Platforms with NTT Data and Vikram Walecha, who is the Vice President of Digital Transformation Services for NTT Data. Welcome to you both, Abby and Vikram. How are you doing today? Great, Adam. Thank you for having us. Uh, excited to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us, Adam. Yeah, looking forward. Excellent. Yeah, really appreciate the time and I'm looking forward to the insight. So let's, let's kind of dig into the topic at hand. I wanted to start by asking what it is that you're seeing as being the most significant digital challenges that businesses that you engage with, that customers that you interact with are really kind of facing at the minute. Let's start, let's start with you, Abby. Yeah, sure, Adam. So you know, we, we, we've come out, you know, we're actually just coming out of a, an unprecedented time that we've all seen in our lives called the COVID uh, pandemic. And that has forced a lot of organizations to do a lot more with a lot less, right? And in doing that, the experience for their customers, for their employees, uh, the, the resilience of the business in general from a security standpoint, all of these things have been super highlighted, right? So, uh, and the only way they can do that, one of the, the major ways that can address this, these issues are through technology. And that's why you use the word digital, which is very apt. Um, so some of the challenges that that clients are facing today are, um, you know, very very highly customized systems of records, which are you know causing disruptions and causing uh, delays and, and loss of productivity. Um, you know, they're they're really struggling with cybersecurity and uh, you know issues around uh, you know that and and, and lot, we've heard so many cases in the in the news about that. Uh, and then again, like I said, the improvement in employee productivity and employee experience. And the the customer uh, experience are are prime challenges that our clients are dealing with today. Yeah, I think and, just to, and just to stress upon what Abhi stated, I mean, economic headwinds exist, and and in the wake of some of it, what we are also witnessing is that digital transformation is uh, proving to be a challenging endeavor for many enterprises today. And the same has been evidenced uh, by the 2024 Entity Data Insights and Vision Survey as well that we conducted. 73% uh, of the businesses uh, have achieved less than 50% of their digital transformation goals in the last two years. And what we are hearing from our clients, there are three common areas which are mostly challenging to our customers. First and foremost is the digital sprawl. Uh, there are disparate and siloed systems uh, companies use across every department and they don't communicate with each other, uh, which ultimately impacts the employee productivity and the experience that's provided to the employees and then ultimately to the consumers and the customers. And then the rigidity in these systems also constrains the ability of the businesses uh, that the basic, essentially the agility that the businesses demand that's constrained by it. Secondly, it's the operational challenges uh, with customer as well as the company's data when it's sitting, when it's sitting across uh, multiple systems and departments, it's a huge challenge to orchestrate the processes, uh, which is necessary to complete the work. And thirdly, there, there's business risk as well. Uh, with all of this data being passed and forth between the people and the systems, how do you maintain the right level of security and governance? I'll be briefly touched upon it. And mostly it happens because of uh, the, the siloed nature of the ecosystem of product the clients have invested in. And then how do you make sure you are in compliance with the rules and regulations of the industry or the region uh, you operate in? And then how do you invest in newer requirements such as ESG that impacts your entire ecosystem and the value chain? So these are some of the challenges and constraints we are witnessing as we are helping our clients navigate through the digital transformation imperatives. Yeah, some really good points. I think not only, I guess, keeping pace with with not what's new and recognizing those new disruptors that are on the horizon, but then also having that focus on business as usual, right? And, and to your point, Vikram, ensuring that you're in a suitable position to maintain those operations. So, so. I think you've laid out really well there what some of the challenges are. How is it that you're seeing businesses 
navigate some of those challenges and and if you can maybe share some information on the type of progress that they're making in delivering against those challenges too what is it that you're seeing there vikram sure sure adam some of the common themes that we are witnessing across enterprises firstly we're looking at modernization and rationalization of the tech estate it's something that's driven by the cios and the ctos that's their imperative modernization of the apps that are built for the cloud adoption of low code no code workflow automation platforms uh, to build apps fast in response to any kind of market disruptions right there is an agility that's demanded and then the the automation platforms which are highly modern and and offer low code no code capabilities uh are coming to fruition and clients have started to adopt those uh, also we're looking at consolidation of application with the enterprise grade systems secondly uh it's a purposeful automation right i briefly touched upon the digital sprawl that's happening uh it's absolutely pivotal for for the clients uh to deliver an automated intelligent system that takes the load and burden of the employees and make them more productive and then uh, they are able to focus on high value work as opposed to day to day uh, mundane activities thirdly we are also uh, witnessing simplification of the experiences as well uh, unification of data is essential today one it imparts visibility uh, to the enterprises that can drive some actions but at the same time when enterprises are able to create an intuitive and intelligent ui that makes it easy for the employees to learn use and adapt that makes them more productive and make them more invested into the organization as well and then ultimately uh, you would you're witnessing everywhere it's pervasive as well there is increased spending in strengthening the security posture as well as ai to unlock productivity as well as augment some experience yeah abby Ab- Ab- is that kind of representative of what of what you see from your conversations with with customers you see yeah, anything absolutely. different and i would and i would say you know it's all about service management right that's a concept that started with it and all that and then you know in today we see it in in every aspect of the business right um what clients uh, what where we go to clients is with a unifying system of action for the myriad of 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 systems and processes and people and customers how do you tie all that together automate that and provide a system of action that can then at a touch of a button solve multiple uh, issues and and connect with multiple systems without the users or without the enterprise really understanding or or needing to know what's going on in the background i think that is the power of uh, servicenow for example which is which is what we take to our clients every day yeah so so would it would it be fair to say that that is really one of the areas that customers are focused on when it comes to service now adoption vikram you mentioned kind of the the simplification against that technology estate how that in turn benefits i guess both people and and processes and the practices that guide modern work is is that really where customers are focused when it comes to service now adoption what is it that you see from from your clients there yeah so uh, service now is supporting organization in delivering against variety of strategic imperatives uh, most notably uh, i think abhi uh, briefly mentioned that one to augment the automation uh, reduce the business cost advance some of the cyber security practices and and essentially by making the workflows more efficient uh, horizontally if you look at the historical uh, the way the platform has adopted as well uh, it's it's initially it was catering to the needs of the cios uh, but now it's catering to each of the c level personas be it chro with the employee workflows uh, cso's with some of the security offerings and and uh, the the governance compliance and risk offerings and then the cxos as well which are mostly focused on uh, augmenting the customer experience but last couple of years what we have witnessed is a verticalization of the service now solutions which are mostly industry aligned and we believe that uh, this industrialization will drive the next phase of growth for for service now and then ultimately will impart incremental value to our clients and that's where we are focused on as well from ntd data perspective we are extremely bullish about it uh, we are developing some novel solutions such as smart security management for schools med divide management and care management for healthcare life sciences uh, vertical smart floor smart factories for manufacturing um and then uh, there is there's a common theme across uh, the offerings that we are building uh it's to infuse intelligence especially gen ai in most of our solutions and we believe that if it's done right it will definitely unlock productivity provide a superior customer um as well as employee experience 
and then ultimately uh, reduce the tech debt and and lower the total cost of ownership for our clients. Yeah, that, that's a really good segue. I think into the final question that I wanted to explore today. Uh, you mentioned earlier, Vikram, the 2024 ServiceNow Insights and, and Vision Survey that we recently worked on, and two themes that emerged as being really important as part of this broader service management and ServiceNow conversation were really security and, to your point, all things generative AI. So, so what is it that you're seeing from customers relating to those two areas, specifically, I guess, in the context of service management? Because both, whether you're talking security or Gen AI, they're impacting the entire enterprise, right? But what are you, what are you, what are you both seeing from a, a service management perspective? Yeah, from security as well as Gen AI, as I stated earlier, I think the platform has uh, expanded beyond the IT services needs. And then since the digitization, uh, there is a lot of focus from our clients to uh, bolster their uh, security posture and make it much more robust. Uh, and that's where ServiceNow has penetrated deeply into uh, building some security-related uh, workflows uh, within the platform. And the value that's imparting to our clients, since they've already invested into the IT service management, they already have robust CMDB uh, built out. It's single architecture, single data model that we are able to leverage uh, across security and not just across security, but other uh, domains as well uh, within uh, within the enterprises. And that's really providing the required agility and acceleration uh, to our to our clients, being able to quickly identify, uh, contain and eradicate the, the security uh, issues and threats that exist today and uh, providing in-depth visibility in terms of your risk posture. I think that's really differentiating um, ServiceNow from, from its competitors. Also with, with intelligence, I think we, we overuse the term Gen AI, but it's, it's the overall intelligence layer that ServiceNow has built, which is much more, which is beyond Gen AI as well, but it's really helping drive uh, some intelligent conversations with the customers, with the employees through chatbots and virtual agents. It's driving enterprise search as well, which is again, AI infused, and then ultimately unlocking some productivity as well with native capabilities such as automated content generation, summarization of, of the content. Uh, and then uh, with the newer Vancouver release, there are capabilities such as text to code and then text to flow that really helps the developers as well to be able to quickly build these workflows. And then as businesses demand newer apps and, and newer workflows, you are able to, uh, again, with, with agility, build those. And, and that's really uh, differentiating service now. Yeah, and I, and I guess we spoke about complexities earlier on and security, Gen AI, complex uh, ideas, complex themes, complex technologies for organizations to get their head around. Are you seeing real appetite, Abby, from, from organizations in kind of looking to adopt these solutions? Is that what you're seeing from your client engagements? Is it really becoming kind of a, I guess, an investment priority for businesses? Yeah, it surely is. And you know, as, as consultants, uh, our job, Vikram and I need to be trusted advisors to our clients and help them be successful in the enterprise modernization journey, right? So as a quick example, uh, you know, when we look at processes that that are fractured or need improvements or or could could do better, um, the capabilities of ServiceNow really help us as consultants to show not tell what we can do uh, when when we look at a process. You can immediately go leverage Gen AI and create custom apps uh, and leverage the uh, uh, the Gen AI uh, and and the app engine capabilities of of uh, ServiceNow by combining them. You can actually within very little time show a prototype of what the to be process could be and the to be improvements could be that to me is a very very powerful tool and kudos to ServiceNow for getting so much progress done in in such a little time around uh, gen ai but the gen ai story is uh, you know evolving uh, it uh, is touching a lot more use cases than anyone even ever thought of of before uh, you know, this this journey began, so very excited to see what's uh, what's happening there, and we'll we'll definitely be at the at the cutting edge with our clients, and who really want to invest uh, top dollars in in helping adopt uh, Gen AI into their organizations. 
perfect route. Wow, yeah, that's r- really insightful, really interesting stuff. I, I want to thank you you both so much for taking the time out today, Abby and Vikram. I really enjoyed the conversation, some excellent insights shared. Uh, thanks, everybody, for for tuning in and watching and, and giving us your time. There's a link below for some additional resources that you can download that go into some further details around some of the themes that we've explored in the conversation. But other than that, thanks, everyone, for watching and have a great rest of your day. Yeah, Adam, just one last comment for me. Uh, or to all the clients out there, we'll be uh, excited to see you at Knowledge uh, in Vegas here pretty soon. Uh, and Vikram and I and several other members uh, of the team will be there and uh, we'll be happy to have conversations with you around digital transformation. Perfect. Excellent. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Vikram. Speak soon. Thanks, Adam.